So there's a lot of good videos on how to do the solo Perico heist. Uh, we call it the island heist. And I've kind of collected all of the tips that I've seen in some different ones together. And I'm going to do this one from beginning to end, the quickest way I've found so far to do it. Uh, we start out with the heist intel. So always make sure you use fast travel. Go over to the um, driver's seat over here. Pick the one closest to the yellow dot, obviously. The thing about the initial aircraft is that they... They, I think they want you to give you the feeling of a really long flight, and they can't do that by having you fly away, so they have you fly across a whole friggin' island. So take the sparrow, we're gonna use the sparrow for just about everything, come over the hill. If you see some dudes close to the plane, you can go ahead and shoot at them, but be careful because you can destroy the airplane, I discovered. The aircraft there is, is destructible. So as long as they're a good distance away, have some fun, fire some missiles, you know, light them up. I, just I know it doesn't feel like a fair fight. It's not not supposed to be. That's most of the fun. And don't shoot the plane. All right, go land. And what I normally do is is whip out the sniper rifle, shoot at anything that's warm. Uh, just come on over here, finish them off. They're not very good shots normally. Don't have to be that careful, but you know. Yes, hit them, please. Thank you. Okay. Then uh, get into the plane. Now, the plane is very slow. Sometimes it'll be on a beach or with some debris in front of it and take off. I've actually had it go into the ocean instead of take off because I wasn't careful. So be careful. Be a little bit patient. Get it going. Slowly get up to speed. Ugh, come on. Couldn't, couldn't be a jet. Couldn't be a, a smuggling jet. No, had to be... This. All right, so get up. You're going to have to fly, as I said, across the whole island. I think they wanted to give you a feeling of a long flight without actually being able to do it, so head off. Now, once you get onto the ground, you want to head over to this motorcycle. There's always a motorcycle here. Uh, there's no one around. You can run all you want. Head off and immediately go off-road. Take a right <coughs> up the hill. Careful of the trees. It's really embarrassing to smash into a bush and go flying. It's just one of those things. The first thing you're going to encounter is the graveyard. I always go to the right of the graveyard and the left of the of the little shacks here. Again, be careful to pick your way through. It's easier to do this during day, of course. It just I happened to get night when I did this. Got to cross this little road here. Watch out for that little section on the left. Don't get, don't get caught. Don't be seen. And pop right over this hill. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do, the only thing that's annoying about this is the checkpoint. You'll see on the right there's that building. There's normally a person there, and I don't know why on this time that there wasn't uh watch out for vehicles you see a vehicle spawning here right there you got to let it by don't let a vehicle see you so go right to the left of this building you see this little building here and you'll see that cone on the left that's that's scanning around that guy's looking for you he won't be able to see you as long as you cross right in front of the building like i said sometimes there's a guy there he won't see you either he's facing the wrong way down the road go right up to this outcropping right up to this little hide behind this tree even during the day he can't see you i know he's right up there i don't know why he can't see you there's two things you got to watch out for here there's the camera and the patrol guy right now the patrol guy is going to the right and you see and actually the vehicles can come too. at this time it's very rare actually maybe once in a while you'll see a vehicle spawn and you have to make sure you don't get in the way of the vehicle so i let that go by and this guy's patrolling back be patient. It's important to be patient here because if you get impatient and you run out when you shouldn't, the guards catch you and you start from the bidding again and you're like, why, 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 why couldn't I have been a little bit more patient? So wait, wait, wait. And you'll see that cone that swung back at you. Can't see you behind the tree even if you're uh, during the daytime. It may not have nothing to do with the tree. I don't exactly know what the rules are for the visual cones. But if you stay in here, he never sees you. Then we want to wait. Okay, he's turned back. You see he's turned back, head up the street just a little bit. Doesn't have to go far. Now, wait for the visual cone. I normally wait for it to be on me and then go away, but uh, there it swung back. Go right around this gate. You see, go right, scooch right around here through these barriers. And then what you want to do is go right up over these sandbags and make an immediate left. You see that video cone of the surveillance camera? Skirt the left side there. Just scooch to the left side. Now, the right-hand side is going to be a watchtower. Uh, he won't see you if you go that route I just showed you, but if you look, uh, you'll see his visual cone is right there. And you'd think he could see you. He's right there, but no, he, he can't. Wait for the visual cone to swing back, and then just run straight across it. 
again, you're watching out for vehicles. Uh, sometimes I've made a straight shot right to the yellow dot, and sometimes I encounter vehicles. Uh, in this particular run, I did encounter a vehicle. Um, just don't panic. Don't worry about running. They won't hear you, but you have to stay out of the cone. Keep an eye on the radar. See, I think I see one coming in a second. Yeah, there's a vehicle coming, so I quickly scooch up. Ah, run. And sometimes there's two vehicles, and you have to kind of play a game of Pac-Man and just avoid the ghosts. It's not always successful. Sometimes they spawn in a way that they're, they're just going to see you. There's nothing. There's nowhere to go, and they get you. It's annoying. happens once in a while. And just head on back. Again, don't be afraid to run. Um, they they can't hear you. The vehicles can. I mean, the dudes may be able to hear you. Now, if you want to bring a motorcycle with you to do this, I guess okay. I've never I've never done it. I'm always afraid of the motorcycle being heard in the checkpoint, so I never do that. But if you find another vehicle here and you want to chance it, go ahead. I think there's a there's a big truck uh, up here that you can grab. I'm being really careful now because I saw those two vehicles. I'm afraid they're swinging back. So normally, like I said, you can just do a straight run as long as you don't see any vehicles. And you're making your way to the communications tower. So all you have to do is get to the communications tower. Once you've scouted out the drainage grate, which is what you're really... That's, that's the way in, is the drainage grate. Once you've done that, you don't ever have to do that again. You don't have to do any of the intel stuff again. You just have to go up to the tower and scout out where the loot is. There's uh, about a dozen places where loot can spawn, and it spawns in like half of them. So you, I usually go through all of the locations uh, to make sure that I know where they are because I'm often bringing friends. I don't always run this solo. Now you want to look for the gate. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's to the left. Look around everywhere in this area because you don't want to climb the tower and discover that you just missed it because it was on the ground floor. That happens sometimes. There's three layers to this thing. Three three, three levels, I should say. Um, climb on up. Make sure the guard at the beginning doesn't see you, although you have to be... I've never had him see me, even though he's standing right there. So, Look around. Don't run up here um, too much. I've gone off the edge without meaning to, and then you respawn back at the beginning, and again, you think, well, why wasn't I just a little more patient? Careful about running around. Careful of the ladders. Remember, ladders punish you in GTA V. Their job is to be ridiculously difficult to navigate. Not here. Of course, on this run, it was at the very top level. It does appear here sometimes. It's annoying. How tall is this thing? Yeah. And there it is. Now, the one tip that I have heard about this, and I like it, is uh, start with the largest value first. So start with, um, in this case, I think I have a 5. Yeah, start with a 5. Find, Make it as big as possible, as close as you can to the upper number. And then the other two should be pretty, you know, get really close with the next one. And then the other, you play around. I got lucky this time. I don't always uh, of getting it the first time. But just start with the largest value and largest multiplier. Uh, go through your cameras, swimming all around. Look at all the loot. And like I said, I do mark that. You don't have to because it doesn't change the location. It just marks it on the map so you can see it. Go through all your cameras. Um, check all the, mark all the locations just so that it appears on the map in case you want to come with friends or something, know where to go, what you're getting. Take a dive, jump off, die, parachute, whatever it lets you do. Get caught by a guard. It just It's all the same thing. You're fast traveling back to the beginning. At this point, the mission is over for you. You don't have to do anything else. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to get back to the sub as quick as possible. At the same time, move the sub closer to where all of your next missions and setups are going to be. So immediately return your Kosaka to storage. That gets that process going. And then summon the Sparrow, which you can do whether the Kosaka is out or not. I guess it's just very fast. Hop in. And as soon as you get in, I usually do it while the thing's spinning up. Go back to your menu and summon the Kosata, which uh, automatically brings it into the location closest to you. So fly, I usually fly a little bit to the right of the airport here. Uh, I guess it's the left on the map, west of it. And it will appear in front of you. There it is. And then you can get to it quickly, get to your next mission, get to the planning table, and start your next mission. Now the next few setups you can do in any order. I generally do them from the top down for no particular reason. Uh, plasma cutter is what you'll need if there's anything behind the case. In this case, I think I have a, a diamond or a necklace. A necklace. So you're going to go to this place where they're planning to do a 
thingy uh, job to her plasma cutter. They're not going to be here. They're going to be way up in their job. Run over to the board. Sometimes the board's over there. Sometimes it's on the left. Sometimes it's on the right. Take a picture of it for your operator guy. Snap a shot, get it up to him, and then just head on out. Pavel will have the location as soon as you get out of the building. Head off to wherever it is. The job location is in some different places. Normally I bomb them from above, and then I go in, guns blazing. This one, this alley is kind of hard to hit the shots because they're kind of down there or they're on the corner. It's one of the more annoying locations. Just soften them up a little bit. And lands. Pull out something appropriate. I think my... I, I like this Mark II carbine the best is what I like doing uh, close-up and personal stuff. No, I'm not the best shot in the world. Run in, gun them down. There are going to be respawns. You have to watch out. The vehicles will come in. There are, they're going to be mad at you. They're going to keep coming after you've stolen it. I see him on the radar, but I didn't realize he was behind the van. It's like, is that him? No, it's right over by the van. There he is. Just pick it up. Once you get it, get away. Head on back and get set up for your next mission. Uh, I think next up is the fingerprint scanner. Yeah, fingerprint cloner. It's super easy to do this. Head to the initial safe house where they have the location of the scanner. You're not going to find it there. You're going to find the location. Um, the easiest way to do this is to land near the towers. Make sure they don't see you. You see little cameras spawn when you get to the yellow dot. And then cut the power. Once you cut the power, they can't see you come in and you get basically first shot. You get a chance to attack them before they, before they can see you. So hot on in. Make sure you look both ways. Yeah, over there, over there. Totally not a complete failure of the UI. There we go, animation. Oh, finally, that's how we do it. For some reason, you turn it off and then back on again. I'm not sure, but I guess you know what you're doing. I don't have a reputation for being the most subtle member of my crew. I generally just sort of bounce a grenade off the back wall and take care of the problems. Very few problems where use the bigger gun doesn't you know, do the job in GTA 5. Try not to get lit on fire. It happens sometimes. Hack the laptop. You'll have the location. It's a real simple laptop. You have to wait for Pavel to stop talking before you can actually use it. Again, I thought it was the UI being angry. And I head on back out and then fly to the next location. There won't be anybody there. It's very easy. Land, there's a couple locations, one's under a bridge, one's over here by the, the dock, by the pier, rather. Try to remember where you parked. Sometimes I'll put a little red sticker on my vehicle so I can find it again easily. Just a little pro tip, pro tip, don't have to take it. There's two cameras here. Shoot them both. Order doesn't matter. If you don't shoot them, nothing happens until you get back out again. There's never anybody inside, but if you don't shoot those cameras, it sets off an alarm, and when you get out, you get chased down by big red angry vehicles they're not too hard to avoid or too dangerous but it's you know annoying it's usually in the back on one of these counters i've never seen it anywhere else it's usually here or just to the right there run on back and we'll get to the next one so now we get to do probably my favorite setup and that's the cutting torch for me gta 5 is very cathartic i love blowing stuff up i like having fun and this is pretty much the one you get to do that the most. Now, there's a lot of different construction sites around. There's one actually in the high-rise, one over here, one in the middle of town. Just have some fun. Practice your maneuvering, practice your panning and altitude controls, and just hold down the missile button. It's pretty much all you have to do here. Try not to blow yourself up hitting a stray bush or a panel or something. They don't shoot back in any meaningful way. So the idea here is to clear out the armed guards and then go in and find out where they hid the cutting torch and which, in which uh, tool panel, toolbox rather. 
that's actually my least favorite part of this is trying to find the right toolbox it's never in the first one i go it's always in the one hidden back behind the stairs in the alcove facing away very very annoying the reason i'm not cutting this short one is because i just like watching explosions and the second is because as soon as i land also land here someplace easy to get away from you will be chased as soon as you get the, the cutting torch I go up the stairs to start clearing out the people who knew how to find cover, and the first guy I shoot goes into the blades. Just <laughs> blender. Anyway, look around. Find the one that has it. Of course, it was the one next to the helicopter. I, I found every other toolbox before I went to this one. Should have just turned left. So as you can see, as soon as you get out and get the thing, they start coming after you. So I try to land not in the street, because I have to run to the street, and they'll, they'll get you. And they won't get you. They're not... Again, very great shots, but head on back, and then we get on to the next one. Now, the next one can go one of two ways. Um, weapons, first of all, which weapons you can get. I go for crack shot because I like having a rifle with a scope on it that can hit people at long distance. Uh, there's a couple of shots in the final heist that use that. Uh, make sure you buy the uh, suppressors as well. Not, um, I, I don't think you can buy them right away. You have to buy them se separately, but anyway... Um, there's two ways this can go. One is you have to follow a helicopter to a Meriwether site. It's long and boring. You just go there and then you bomb everything and and you leave. This one's a little bit more difficult than that one, uh, but it takes less time. You head over to the... Uh, there's a heist going on. And there's always two entrances. There's the basement entrance, or sorry, the ground floor entrance and the... Um, roof instance always go the roof it's easier you can just land and go in you don't have to do anything no fuss no mice you have to shoot your way in you do have to shoot your way out but you have to do that anyway I, I strongly recommend the roof it's also excellent practice for learning how to land it's there's a couple of different places it can be um the schlongberg center is i think it's that big tower right in front of us Take a second to head up. They don't make this easy. They don't have a helipad. They don't make it easy to, to land. Uh, you want to land in such a way that it doesn't destroy your helicopter. Um, on this particular one, I always try to land on the little bridge here. Again, it's good practice. If you don't want to do this, um, just go in the basement or the ground floor or take out your oppressor, whatever you want to do. Hop in. Head on down, and you have to clear a building. You have to clear a, uh, an office like the kind you have as a CEO. These guys are not great shots, but there's a lot of them, so be kind of careful. Um, I always say you can't be too careful. Stuff like this, make sure you armor yourself up. There's a guy on the left. Probably should have edited out some of this. Not, not a lot of necessary stuff here. There's sometimes a guy in this room over here. I always you know, send him a little present. Doesn't always even get him, but it makes me feel better. Now, once you try to open the gun locker, Pavel starts talking. You can't access this laptop until he stops talking. You have to do a simple little hack, and then you can open up the gun locker. I didn't realize this for a while that the numbers are always scrolling up and to the left so once you find i just look for the 55 59 and once i find that i kept thinking the numbers re-scramble themselves every time they don't they just they scroll so once you find it just follow it up to the left you probably already knew that and you're thinking you're doing a guide on how to do this and you didn't know that we knew that years ago i know up into the gun cabinet get out the stuff that you need now when you get back onto the roof there's going to be a couple of helicopters there waiting for you. So I always make sure that I bring something that can quickly deal with them. Also, armor up if you don't. You don't want to get capped here because you'll spawn back on the ground floor, and it's annoying because then you have to get back up to the top, and the helicopters shoot at you the whole time. So pop out, find the helicopters. There they are. Just go for the tail rotors. Don't shoot your own helicopter as I sometimes do. I can be a little enthusiastic. So next up is the approach vehicle, and I always do this one last, because the sub is the best approach vehicle, 
and you always have to move the sub in order to get to the location of the radar, a sonar jammer, which you need. So do this one last so that you can go fast travel to it. And then as soon as it's over with, you can start the heist right away. So fast travel. Always, again, pick the one closest to the dot. There's a couple locations. They're all pretty far north. Or both, I should say. Um, take up the sparrow and blast everything. You have to get pretty close. And there's at least one helicopter It's going to be up there. Always get the helicopter first. I find that GTA 5 has this thing where they... They, when something spawns, they kind of like grab a random roll of how good a shot that thing's going to be. And sometimes the shot, sometimes they're incredibly accurate. Like they're, they're so good it's ridiculous. They'll, they'll bullseye you from any range. And sometimes these guys get that roll. Sometimes the, uh, the Meriwether gets it. As soon as you're over the spot, you've destroyed the boat. Make sure you destroy everything before you do this. It can be really, really difficult to get if you don't. Just hop out. Let your sparrow destroy itself. Swim on down, and then clear to the bridge. Uh, that's where the sonar jammer is three times out of four. I have sort of a quick pattern I do. I throw a grenade down here. It usually gets both people at once. Make sure you don't bonk it off of the roof and land at your feet. There's always a guy in the corner on the right. Make sure he's taken care of. Luckily, the soldiers in here are always in the same location. Um, they are, they sometimes are very good shots. You want to make sure you keep up with your armor. Because they'll just pop out of nowhere and, and blast you in like two or three shots. Like I said, I think it's random. Um, and they're not always great, but whatever it is, they seem to keep it. So, the like I said, the sonar jammer is normally here. And in this case, it was. If it's not here, you have to go keep going to the I think it's the aft of the sub it's in the engine room so as soon as you get out before you get to the surface summon your dinghy and swing directly to the ding swim directly to the dinghy also I didn't mention it before but you should always have uh, scuba gear for this just makes it easier doesn't doesn't put you on a clock uh, holding your breath you'll see that there's choppers that have respawned they will shoot at you and they can be decent shots so you need to get on the dinghy and get away quickly Again, if you get killed here, you spawn on the shore. Kick yourself for not being more careful. Just head on back. Uh, they'll stop following you uh, when you have to get pretty close to the sub before they stop following you. And we're ready to start the heist proper. So, start it up. Select drainage tunnel. Uh, drainage tunnel for in infiltration. I'm not sure why infiltration and approach are separate. I Never done it enough, but set up all your stuff. You want to make sure... Do it during day. It just makes things easier to see. Swim up to the grate. Do the little cutting metagame. Doesn't take too long. I always feel like I could do a better job. So as soon as you come out, immediately turn left. Go up the stairs. Headshot this guy. Now, what you're trying to do is get... You need a gate key and a key... Um, yeah, you need a gate key and a card key. So, come back over here. I use a rifle to do this shot. There's a skull guy who comes over here. I call him a skull guy. He's the ones with the minigun. I usually get him right between these two trees. You don't have to shoot him. Uh, make sure you shoot him before he goes down the stairs or just, re just after he goes down those stairs. Uh, otherwise, the, the alarm goes off. Someone sees him. I'm not exactly sure why. I got two guys here. Um, the way I think it works is that as soon as you shoot someone, you get what feels like around three seconds to kill him. As long as he dies within three seconds, there's no alarm. So if you have two people, uh, shoot the first guy, you know, headshot the first guy, and try to quickly headshot the second guy. If you miss, and I usually miss about half the time, just turn on the full auto pistol and drill him. Wait for this guy to come around and shoot him. Now, the completionist in me wants to shoot everybody, but you don't need to shoot everybody, uh, especially if you're trying to do the under 15 minute um, elite run. Um, you're trying to make sure that you get the the key and the card. So this guy here, you can you can safely shoot if you haven't gotten one yet. 
Come down over here and then over the railing. Now there's a patrol guy coming. Just watch your radar. Um, you want to make sure that you shoot this guy as he's walking towards you or as he's walking away. There's a camera that can see him. And if you shoot him where the camera can see him, the alarm goes off. I've gotten this a gotcha I've gotten a couple times to see the camera he's walking by right now. So be patient. He's going to turn around and come back. Um, sometimes I, I, I was impatient and I shot him because he'll hesitate. He'll stop walking. And I thought that was the point at which I should shoot him. And it wasn't. A word about that skull guy earlier. If you don't shoot him and you don't have to, he will patrol around the area you need to go to next. And he's close enough that if you run or you shoot near him, so you don't shoot him yet. Wait there. Now he's past the camera. Uh, that skull guy will, uh, I, I think he's alarmed on me a couple times. That's why I shoot him. I pop this camera because I just don't like cameras. All right. Uh, this is a tough shot to make, uh, but it's easy. You got all the time in the world. Line it up. Just go right above the railing there and, and shoot him. Now you're going to go around to the left here. There's a guard who actually patrols. He'll spend a lot of time standing around to the left. And that's where you sometimes find him. But be, be warned that he sometimes walks to the left and right. As soon as you shoot him, and I think there's probably a door trigger here. As soon as you walk through this archway, you'll see that guy up there starts pathing. And he'll path down right to there, and he'll stop. And he'll hang a big shoot me sign on his head. So just wait for that sign. Um, trust me, he'll hang it out there. You right now. See? There you go. You didn't need that. So at this point, you're pretty clear. Head on up and into the doorway. Grab the key card, the second key card. In, the, uh, in this case, it's the, the second one. If you have more than one person with you, you can get that. Uh, the other secondaries, but you don't need to. You can get plenty of secondary loot. Open the, va uh, the vault. I don't know exactly how much is in there. I saw in another video that they see from 50 to 100,000. I don't even know where to, to look at that. I guess you look at the take. Uh, the fingerprint scanner is a lot easier than it looks at first glance. Each one of these bars has the same uh, print in it. You just have to count down from the top. If you have trouble with that, uh, there's probably videos that explain it a lot better. This is meant to be more of a survey. Hop out of the elevator. Burn the lock. Now, you're either going to have to remember a combination of the safe on your left, or you have to burn through the display case directly in front of you. In this case, of course, I have the plasma cutter. It's longer than... It takes a while. I skipped over that. I didn't want to skip over too much. I've seen other guides where they'll skip over boring stuff, and it's like, I don't know where you went. <laughs> I did. I missed it. So I'm trying to be a little careful with this one to make sure I don't skip over important moves. Go down here. Just remember, spiral to the right. Spiral to the right. And go back out to where we killed that other guard guy. Make sure we... And by this time, we'll have picked up a key to the gate. Now, there's two guys here. There's one who's just standing there, and there's a patrol. The, watch the patrol guy. Make sure he's on the left when you shoot this guy. See, he's walking by now. Make sure he's good in the way. Then shoot him. Just watch the visual cones. No need to kill that guy. He goes all the way to the left. Be patient. And then you're out. Now, the first thing you want to do when you get out is pop this guy here on the motorcycle. Now, you can take the motorcycle. Um, I do right up here. You don't have to. There's another motorcycle right up there. Get this guy. He's by himself. I don't bring the motorcycle close to these two guys because I'm afraid of them hearing the engine. And by this time, I've never been in the mood to test that. Again, you got the one-two. Just... Just get him. I was close there. I thought I set the alarm off at this point. Like I said, there's always another uh, helicopter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> helicopter. He's coming. Motorcycle here. Uh, you don't have to pop that camera. I do. Go right directly this way. See that tower on the right? Upper right. It's going to have a sight cone, and it's going to look right at you. So you want to go no further to the right than I'm going, but go directly over this ridge down into the valley. Watch the sight cone on the right. The helicopter's going to spawn behind you. you got plenty of time. Go all the way down to the valley right here and then wait. Wait to see where the helicopter goes. He might go off to your left. He might go off to your right. Um, until you know which way he's going, just hang out. Once the helicopter has passed you by, and the helicopter has a visual cone on it. It'll tell you where it's looking. Once the helicopter goes by, it never comes back. Go up here to the left, and we're going to thread the needle a little bit. It's not. You don't have to be super precise. But you can see those 
sight cones on the left and right, and you're going to go right between them. I take the, heli uh, the motorcycle about this far. Again, I don't want them to hear the engine. I don't know what range the engine has. Run down here, and then once I get to here, I stop running because I'm afraid of stomping on a bush and them hearing. I'm pretty sure that <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that when you run across a bush, um, that's what causes the the extra volume that it would alert the guards. Go straight across here. You see, I'm going between the sight lines up to what I call the shooting tree. The shooting tree is a is a white like a birch tree. Um, again, I stop running right as soon as I get to the brush. Sometimes I get impatient. I shouldn't, but I do. This white tree right here, I call it the shooting tree. You want to get right to it and then look to its left. On its left, you'll see a guy and a camera. You shoot the guy and the camera. At this point, you can run. There's no chance you're going to get caught. Just run on down. This is where the first stash is going to be. You'll see there's two tables. Sometimes there is loot on one or both tables. I've never seen there be loot on neither table. This is where you're going to start filling up your bags. This is why you don't need to go anywhere inside the compound to get loot. Always wait to... Now, when you're running multiple people, you do have to go through the compound to fill up everybody's bags. But when you're running solo, you don't. Just in and out that exact route. Fill up the bag here. Now, stay on the dirt road. As long as you stay on the dirt road, no one will see you. There's going to be one guard here. He patrols backward and forward. Sometimes I pop him with a rifle. Sometimes I pop him with a pistol uh don't worry about anyone who's not red those guys running around they, they don't alert then there's a second guard over to the left and he patrols left and right and there he is right there and again i'm going to show you with the, with the rifle it's an easier shot just a little more confidence the big disadvantage with the rifle is that there's very slow follow-up shots if you miss you're done you're, you're not going to get another shot in time but with a pistol you know, you miss, you panic, you hold the left mouse button down, spray and pray. You know, you, you have a chance. <clears throat> There's two guys on the right over there and the guy up in the tower. Don't worry, they can't see you. Just stay on the dirt path. They're, they're computer programs. They're not people. They're not smart. Fill up the bag. Now, after you fill these two bags up, you've only got to kill two more guys. Super easy. And they don't even see you leave. Generally, you get away with this. and They're not even following you. So run... Stay on the dirt road. See those two guys over there? They they do not alarm. There's a guy, there's a tower up there. I wanted to show you the tower, but I, I it's behind the building. But anyway, it looks like they can see you from that tower. They can't. Head on up the dirt road. Now go to the left, bare left. And I stay on the dirt road, I mean the left-hand dirt road. The right one, they might, they might see you. But the left-hand one, they won't. Go behind these shipping containers. I don't think you have to. I just, that's my pattern. One of these days, I'll experiment by trying to get caught on purpose and see where the actual levels are there's a guy by the crane i call this the crane guard right over here now he's watching the bay and he'll see you leave an alarm and shoot at you not that that's a big problem at this point you're you know you're going to get away they, they can't shoot unless, as long as you got full armor they're not going to be able to do enough damage to you there's one guard standing on a dock over here again uh, i'll use the rifle on him don't have to the pistol does just fine he can just about see this boat, and if you don't shoot him, then while you're trying to get on the boat, and sometimes GTA 5 will swim you around in circles trying to figure out how to get on a boat, they'll shoot you and kill you, and it's annoying. Hold full throttle all the way to the left. If the boat doesn't start turning right away, you got to get it some speed. You'll see that patrol boat right in front of you. You're going to know where the cone's going to be, so try to avoid it. It doesn't matter if you get seen at this point. They're not going to stop you. I mean, of course, they're going to try to stop you, but but they'll fail because you got in the way and they're, they're just not that good a shot so you can get away from the island any direction you want as long as you're far enough from the island the quest ends the, the the heist is over so you don't have to actually get to the sub or anything and that's it complete guide from beginning to end of the perico heist with the elite challenge getting everything wasn't really that difficult i took a little extra time even this time so i i, I came close 14 10 but uh i've never missed it when I've um, not set the alarm off. Plenty of money. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned some stuff. And I'd love to hear what you thought of the guide. And uh, happy destroying stuff in one of my favorite games.